Graham Sharp and Kevin Richardson lose their places, though Sharp is the substitute. Also missing is Terry Curran, who's publicly voiced his discontent at being left out after making an impact as substitute in Everton's last two games. Newcastle keep faith with a side that's been unchanged since the start of the season. Steve Carney has overcome a hamstring problem. But Jack Charlton wants to strengthen his squad, particularly in midfield, an area weakened by Terry McDermott's dispute with the club, which now goes to a league tribunal. Today's referee is Colin Seal from Carlisle. Newcastle United kickoff on a surface slicked by heavy morning rain. Back in front of their stimulating supporters after rather painful visits to Arsenal and Manchester United. Andy Gray in tremendous form, Howard Kendall was saying before the kickoff in the reserve game in midweek. Booked his place back in place of a very disappointed Graham Sharp. McDonald, Brown's gone ahead of him. Carney let it run and gets it back again. And Southall is able to slide out in front of Waddle. was cleverly constructed by Newcastle. The dummy first of all by Carney, played back to him by Kenny Wharton, and Southall made the decision to go for the low ball played in, and it was the right decision. McDonald, again under no real pressure. Here's Beardsley. Beautifully done. Well made contact with the ball, and now Waddle goes down this time, it's a penalty. Everton protest. I think it was Kevin Ratcliffe who slid into the back of Chris Waddle. As Beardsley and Waddle, two great individuals, threatened Everton with solo bursts. Bracewell got the ball away from Beardsley. Then down went Waddle, and Colin Seal pointed straight to the penalty spot. And here's Peter Beardsley. It's 1 0. 12 minutes. Confidently struck. Beardsley's second successful penalty in the first division and his third goal of the season. Jack Charlton saying before the game that he was concerned that Everton were a hard side to break down. But Newcastle have got an early goal and they owe it really to the individual inspiration of their two forward players, Peter Beardsley, who played his part and Chris Waddle, who was brought down, cutting in towards Neville Southall's goal. Carney. And now Waddle. He's in the clear, in at Southall. And Neville Southall presented a formidable frame to Chris Waddle. The Everton goalkeeper arrived back from World Cup duty with Wales, feeling unwell been under treatment from the Everton club doctor, but he was at his sharpest then to deny Waddle. Saunders offering himself for the short one with Waddle. He can get by defenders on both sides. Saunders again. Rodo waiting. And Neil McDonald on a bouncing ball couldn't keep it down. Newcastle United in full cry at the moment. Rhoda making a nuisance of himself. And just dropping a little too high for McDonald's volley. Certainly Peter Beardsley and Chris Waddle not quite getting the service that they got in the second division when Keegan was around to help them. But here's Heath trying to provide service for Kevin Sheedy, who's back with a goal. 25 minutes, totally justifying the thinking of Howard Kendall, a player who has got
got into double figures in his two seasons with Everton from midfield. He's had a troublesome ankle injury. There was a real chance that he would not sign a new contract for the club this season, but they persuaded him to stay. He's keen to stay, and Everton fans will be glad of that with finishing like that. 1-1. Newcastle held their lead for 14 minutes. And Kevin Sheedy showing again how useful he is arriving in scoring situations from midfield. Here's Waddle, though, for Newcastle. He's lost Mountfield, and he so nearly restored Newcastle's advantage. so difficult for defenders to make a challenge when he's inside the penalty area. Model dragging the shot wide. So when the whistle went, it seemed certain to be for a Newcastle free kick. Instead, it's taken by Sheedy and put wide by Mountfield from a position in which he will reflect that he should have scored from. The disappointment showing then. Kevin Sheedy, again, so accurate. And Derek Mountfield, unmarked, from some six yards, putting it over the top. Carney. Ryan gets in the cross. And McDonald was climbing for all he was worth. And now Bailey losing out to Waddle. McCreary is in the middle, and Southall acrobatically scrambles it over the top. It wasn't quite... I don't think where Waddle intended, but it nearly embarrassed the goalkeeper, who was conscious of McCreary arriving at the near post. And the whistle is for half-time. The boos are really for the Everton approach. After Peter Beardsley had put Newcastle in front from the penalty spot after 12 minutes. But Kevin Sheedy, who got two goals against Newcastle's reserve team on Tuesday night, has bounced back to first team action with a goal against the Newcastle first team here on the Saturday. Half-time score at St James's Park, Newcastle United 1, Everton 1. Everton get the second half underway. After their activities here, they're off to European competition against University College Dublin. Wharton has been gifted a goal 15 seconds into the second half. And maybe Everton had other things like a European escapade on their mind. They certainly weren't concentrating on the matter in hand. The scorer from the Newcastle United, number eight, Kenny Wharton. And Kenny Wharton was certainly full of life coming out for the second half and kept on running and just prodded it past Southall. To those who have criticised Everton for not scoring enough goals, they have scored in every league game this season and Andy Gray looks to make it two here and Kevin Carr Bailed Newcastle out with an acrobatic stop. Gray profiting from more defensive uncertainty. The car was not to be beaten. He played Wharton onside. Stephen, 2-2. Trevor Stephen, who comes from Berwick-upon-Tweed and used to watch his football here as a Newcastle United fan, shows again that Everton have midfield players who can score goals. They've got one from Sheedy. And now Stephen, darting in from his berth wide on the right, gets into a threatening position and tucks it past Kevin Carr. And Beardsley again. It's an interesting little duel between two players who are great friends off the field. And Wharton. Carney! Brilliant block by 
Southall and Carney again. Southall again. McDonald and just diverted away for the corner by Sheedy with Wharton waiting behind in case Sheedy had missed it. But Neville Southall made a significant save from Steve Carney who must have thought he put Newcastle back in front from that position. The problem with just the two front players for Newcastle is there isn't always a target man available. As Heath was available for Everton. He's got past Saunders, he's got Gray in the middle and he had Sheedy who went to really try and be too short and got too close to the goalkeeper. It was perfectly set up for Sheedy by Adrian Heath who kept his head here, saw what was on what was on was Kevin Sheedy. Gray just made the extra room, but Carr beat it away. Before the free kick can be taken, Newcastle want to make a substitution. They're calling off Steve Carney, who's had hamstring trouble. And 19-year-old Paul Ferris, a Northern Ireland youth international, comes into the first division scene for the first time. Heath and Gray is trying to switch it to his left foot and in that moment really of slight indecision the opportunity was lost and Newcastle tried to punish that with Waddle against Mountfield and Waddle is past him and he tried to commit Southall which he has done and his teammates were flat-footed Ferris wanted it cut back but really Newcastle players were guilty of standing and admiring the magnificent work here of Waddle. There was a chance that he totally cut out for himself. And just look at the little game of wits with Southall before he leaves the goalkeeper. But as the ball got across the face of the goal, it was only blue shirts there to deal with it. And Southall uncertain back foot from Saunders, it was Beardsley's volley, now Brown, and dispossessed by Adrian Heath, and he not only lost the ball, he lost his balance as well, which meant getting back was taking that much longer, no chances materialising at both ends, still it remains 2-2. Swing it again from Stephen. Beardsley's is the last boot which connected. Stephen. He helped it on and Carr had to backpedal furiously. It would have been a freak goal, but it certainly looked as though it was dropping in. Adrian Heath, intent, I'm sure, was just to help the ball into the middle. Had to reposition very rapidly indeed. Sheedy's caught. And he will have a second attempt. Courtesy of Malcolm Brown. And Gray! They have looked so dangerous from Sheedy's in swinging corners. And two minutes from the end, they finally make one count. Newcastle showing that brittleness in the defensive side of their play, allowing Gray from three yards. Delight for the scorer. Delight, I'm sure, for the Everton manager, Howard Kendall, who had to make the decision to leave out Graham Sharp. Just as the return of Kevin Sheedy has paid dividends, so too has the return of Andy Gray. And here's Wharton. It was a gallant effort of a player who weighs less than nine stone and is always in the thick of the fray. And Reed playing it into space that it will take time to retrieve the ball. In fact, time past Newcastle United by Andy Gray's winner two minutes from the end after Everton were twice behind 
the Newcastle scorers, Peter Beardsley with a penalty and Kenny Wharton at the start of the second half. Paul Bracewell will feel pleased with his contribution on his return to the North East. But Howard Kendall will in particular be pleased with the recall of Gray and Kevin Sheedy, a scorer, and Trevor Stephen, who also came from midfield to level it at 2-2. 